Hey, how's it going? You still there? <laughs> All right, let's do some fixtures. Um, so for this section, uh, we can use. I'm going to use this one here, this file here, body types. That just has some bodies set up here. I just wanted to have a few bodies to use for this one. So fixtures are added in the same way that we added bodies by using this action menu and we use the second one down here obviously and we can see that everything is grayed out because we don't have a body selected at the moment and as you may be aware or you should be aware at this point fixtures don't really exist just on their own they need to be given a body to attach themselves to so we need to select a body to attach them to so let's start with this one and they will be added at the cursor position so I'll put the cursor up there and let's try that again okay add so that's spacebar to get this menu add fixture and then we have pretty much the same options that we had for adding a body at least the last four options um, obviously adding some with no fixtures doesn't make sense because we're adding a fixture so we have circle square inside polygon and edge so I'll just go with circle here and over here I'll move the cursor a little bit and then we have uh, let's go with the insided polygon and we'll have a hexagon like that so that's how we add fixtures and you notice that they went onto this body because I had it selected I could also have selected more than one body to add the fixture to so let's say we add, uh, sorry, we select two bodies now, and I'll move this, um, I'll move the cursor to this point here in the middle of them, and I will add, let's add a triangular fixture, so, whoops, sorry, fixture, and we'll make it inside the polygon with three sides. So now we have a triangle in the middle and it's been attached to both bodies because we had both bodies select selected. So what that means is that we actually have two fixtures here now. And this should be a little bit more obvious if we mouse over these bodies we can see the three dashed lines to the fixtures that this body owns. And over here we can see one dashed line going there. And if we select this body and move it now it's a little bit more clearer to see uh, what's going on there. We have actually added two fixtures, one for each body that was selected, but they went at the same position. Okay, and we can also do uh, duplicating and copying and pasting, and very similar to how we did it for bodies. So that was using Shift D, except now we'll go into fixtures mode and we will select a fixture or let's say we'll select two fixtures so I have two fixtures selected and I hit shift D and once again if we move the mouse there we'll see that immediately after hitting shift D we are now translating the the things that we duplicated so I'll just move them over here say so now we have, uh, what have we got here? Another f extra five fixtures on this body. Like that. So duplicating is yeah, basically the same as for bodies. Uh, copying and pasting is also the same, uh, except copying and pasting has a little bit more meaning than it did for bodies. As we mentioned before, copying and pasting bodies within the same document is pretty much the same as duplicating them really but copying and pasting fixtures uh, is more useful for example let's go back to fixtures mode and let's copy, uh, I'll select this hexagon and 
that hexagon. So we've selected these two hexagons and I will now copy Control C and if I just go up to here to the edit menu uh, I can see the options that I have for paste which is nothing, it's grayed out at the moment and that is because when you paste a fixture it's kind of the same as when you create a fixture you need to put it on a body it can't just be pasted into into the scene by itself and if we go back to bodies mode uh, we don't have any bodies selected so let's go over to let's go over to this body and I'll select that body oh, actually let's select two of them because this will demonstrate the way it pastes onto more than one body so now I have two bodies selected and I have two fixtures in my clipboard and I could just confirm that by coming up here and checking the uh, edit menu to see what will happen if I do control V so I have two fixtures onto two bodies and let's do control V and so we can see sure enough we have the two hexagons that we copied and they've gone on to each of these two bodies that we had selected so you can duplicate and copy and paste onto multiple targets for fixtures uh, another thing that's interesting to note is that when you have bodies in the same orientation like this um, and you select say if I select these two fixtures here when I do um, a movement on these it's effectively the same movement within the bodies that owns it um, so you can select a bunch a bunch of fixtures in different bodies and you can edit them all at the same time so if I wanted to stack these on top of each other like that I can do that operation across multiple bodies okay um, now there are a whole bunch of um, options that we can use for fixture types and we haven't really looked at many of them here because we just have polygons this is also a polygon and we have circles so um, obviously we have this other fixture type here which is an edge and those are the basic um, fixture types that you have available in Box2D and we're going to look at a few more options that Rube lets you do so I'm just going to close this file and we'll go back to here and we will take a look at this one here fixture types now in this file we have a bunch of uh, crazy fixtures and they're all the same uh, they have the same vertices so by what I what I mean by that is if we zoom in here and oh, okay let's look at these two we can see they have the same shape and if I hit V to change into vertex edit mode we can see that they have the same arrangement of vertices so this is I kind of just call this a vertex list it's a very imaginative imaginative name isn't it and what this lets us do is by only changing one aspect of this fixture we can get all different kinds of results all different kinds of box 2d bodies just by selecting a different fixture type or a different shape shape type to be precise so you can see now that all of these fixtures have exactly the same layout of uh, vertices and all we have done is change if we come over here so back into I'm in fixture edit mode now and let's select this fixture so fixtures have of course um, the typical box 2d properties that we've or you should be familiar with now restitution and friction and so on and then down the bottom here we have this thing called shape which decides what should be done with this list of vertices and we can change that for example here we have a combo box 
and I'm changing this one here so I can change this to be a line instead of a polygon which gives me this one here so this is a line shape and I can change it to loop and all that does is close off this bottom uh, point between the first and the last vertices so that's a loop polygon is obviously we just saw as a polygon and we can also choose circle but in order to choose circle we need to have set the radius to a value greater than this uh, minimum value so we have this radius value here and if I change the radius for this polygon we will see that's probably a bit small 0 0.1 no, let's make it larger 0 0.2 boom so okay it's too large really isn't it 0 0.1 so we can see what that's done is that has made we still have not changed the vertices at all we're using exactly the same layout of vertices but it's just gone around and it's created as well as having a solid inside we also now have um, circles at the vertices and we have um, more rectangular polygons joining each segment of the, of the external surface of the shape um, so now we can select circle now that we have a non-zero radius and we can just have circles for the vertices instead of segments and lines or we could go back to choosing line and that leaves us with an open-ended shape like this but it's still solid because we have these circles and the segments have been made into rectangles and loop just closes off the end of the shape like that so uh, in future versions I'm hoping to extend this so that these control points, I guess you could call them the, the actual, these actual vertices themselves, will be used as the control points for say a spline and then instead of basing the fixtures on the actual positions of these points themselves the fixtures will be based on the positions of the spline that flows through the points and then you'll be able to choose how uh, how dense you want to make the actual fixtures so you could scale it up or down depending on um, whether you're trying to run it on iPhone or a, or a fast CPU or something like that so hopefully that will be added in a future version of the program um, so for now I hope that was a clear enough demonstration of what these uh, these shape types are all about and I'll just uh, undo everything that I did there so obviously you can see here we've got a, a setup showing all the possible options for this arrangement of vertices uh, there's nothing here because you cannot select a non-zero radius for circles so we have circle line loop polygon and up the top we have zero radius and here we have I think 0 0.1 radius so that's just a um, quick look at that and just before we finish um, we should also take a look at vertex windings and that is a vertex winding is if I just go into vertex mode here and I mouse over this one we should see in the tooltip there we see that this is index 5 if I go to the next one over here this is index 6 okay so there's a 6, 7, 8, 19 and I think one of these here will be 0 because this was the beginning of the of the chain so this is 0 and then over here we have 22 so this means that if we travel around these vertices in order we're following a counterclockwise path and this is the optimal configuration when it comes to calculating these internal polygons um, as the polygon decomposition because this is obviously it's a concave shape and box 2D can't deal with concave polygons directly so Rube when it exports this file 
uh, for use in your game, it will break these down into convex polygons that Box2D can use. And that's what we see here with these uh, slightly faded internal lines in the middle. Uh, if those lines are too faint for you, you can actually turn them up or down under the display. Where are we? Concave polygon internal edge alpha. So we can turn those right up like this. So now they're very visible. Or you can turn them off completely if they if you just don't really care about that. So now we can see they're uh, gone. I like to have it a little bit more like that. Just so that I know I can see where they are, but they don't really, you know, get in my face too much. But for now we do want to see where they are, so let's make it a little bit more prominent. Like that. Okay, so um, we have a, a counterclockwise vertex winding here, which is good. The polygon decomposition has given us a nice uh, empty space in here, so there's not too many polygons and they're all quite sensibly arranged. And this is because we're using the um, Bayazit, I'm not sure if that's the right pronunciation, but it's a method of decomposing these polygons so that we get a, a nice uh, a few as few as possible of them uh, and there's another method that I've used in the program here called poly two try so you can actually under the geometry tab you can you can choose which one of these should be used for by default and the poly two try uh, uses triangles instead of polygons so for example in this leftmost one here we have a one two three four five so this is a pentagonal shape here with five points and the poly two try doesn't do that it will give you always triangles so we'll get a lot more shapes in here um, so usually you want to keep the default to this Bayazit method because it will give you better results um, I have found though unfortunately that the Bayazit method at least the way that I'm using it maybe I'm doing something wrong but um, we will see that if I reverse the vertex winding here, which we can do by selecting the fixture and then in the action menu we have this option here, fixture reverse with vertex winding. Uh, we can see when we do this two things. We can see obviously that we have a lot more internal polygons in here now and they're all triangles. So we're using the poly two try method. And we also see down here uh, warning to say that the Bayazit decomposition attempt failed. Um, I'm not blaming Mark Bayazit for that, there may be something I'm doing wrong, but uh, suffice to say that the result um, that we get in Rube, at least at the current time, is that clockwise vertex windings will always use the poly to try method of polygon decomposition. So this will happen uh, if you if you flip shapes like this um, and they were um, counterclockwise to begin with if you if you mirror them they'll become clockwise and vice versa so just one thing to keep in mind if you mirror vert, uh, if you mirror fixtures like this you should probably also afterwards go around and change the vertex winding so in this case if I let's say I mirror this across the y-axis like that now the polygon winding will return to counterclockwise and I will get the nice uh, nice polygon decomposition again. So you can see the difference there. Okay, that's going to do it for fixtures and uh, I'll see you in the next video.